If I go to the very end, what would it be like were it true? Can you give reality to the imagined state? If you do, yes, a bridge of incident will appear in your world. And you'll walk across some series of events leading up to the fulfillment of the imaginal state. But don't give causation to any physical step that you took towards the fulfillment of it. You imagine yourself having a marvelous business. And then comes the day a building is for sale and you haven't a nickel towards it. And a total, not a total stranger, but a man comes in and asks you quite in a friendly manner, are you going to buy it? And knowing you don't have a penny, you say to him, as you would a friend to a friend, with what? And then he says, well, I have money. It's only in the bank put, drawing nothing. You say, well, I have no collateral. But he said, I watch you. You're an honest person. Your family, they're honest. I think they are. Would you like me to buy it for you? Get my lawyer to bid for it. If they knew that I'm bidding, that I have money, they'll bid me up. And so I get it at the very lowest price by getting a lawyer who represents more than one client and they do not know who he represents and he'll bid for it. Are you willing to take it regardless of the price? And you say, yes, I'll take it. But I have no collateral. All I need is your signature, that you will simply pay 6% on whatever the price is and then reduce that principal over a period of 10 years. Agreed? Yes. But then sign this, and we'll see if we can buy it. That day, you owned the building. And you didn't have one nickel when you owned the building that day. You only had your signature on a piece of paper. At the end of 10 years, you repaid the man his principal. You reduced it every year, paying him 6% on the remaining principal, and reduced the entire thing at the end of 10 years. That man dies 20 years later and leaves you 150,000 in cash tax-free and a couple of homes and many personal belongings. In the meanwhile, you continue in that business and it multiplies and multiplies. And that year was 1922, 1924. This is now 1968. That building, I'm speaking factually, that building in 1924 is now gone. He paid only $50,000 for it. It was repaid and repaid. A bank, three years ago, bought the property, because the building was rotted, bought the property for $840,000 in cash and no capital gain. From $50,000 to $840,000. In the meanwhile, the business has expanded into all the other islands so that today you couldn't buy them out for $15 million. All in imagination. And this goes back to the imagination that preceded this man's offer to buy the building. For the young man seeing this building and entertaining a thought that the present owners deceived his father and through deception got him out of a partnership, a junior partnership. And he was moved not to get even, but to prove that he really had something within him and could be a success in spite of their deception. And so every day he would see on that marquee, not their name, but his own family's name. And he would see it in his mind's eye because you could not take their name and transliterate it and make it spell this man's family's name. But he saw it, and in his mind's eye, he saw that name, which, if true, would imply the family owned it. He did it every day, twice a day, for two years. And then came this sudden, out of the nowhere. And the whole thing was made possible, and today they're all over the islands. And they have no partners. They've never taken in one partner, never sold one bit of stock outside of a family ownership. All by imagination. Now, I know what I'm talking about because I am a member of that family. I'm speaking of my own family. This is not hearsay. I know it. My second brother, Victor, was the one in whose imagination this whole thing began to bloom. And he still works all by imagination. He knows what he wants, and then after having decided in himself, that's what I want, and that's good for the business, he then, in his mind's eye, he appropriates it and then let things happen. 
And if it takes a thousand men to aid the birth of that state, a thousand men will play their parts. I don't have to go out and look for them. Any more than my brother had to go out and look for this man. He would not have known where to start looking for one the day of the sale. As far as he is concerned, he had done it in his mind's eye. And he allowed everything to happen. And he comes right in like a joke. He really thought it was a joke. And he said to this man, are you fooling me? He said, no. He said, well, then wait. Let me call my father. He said, lunch. He called him on the wire. He said, Daddy, come on up. Leave everything and come. And then he said, now you tell my father what you told me. My father's name is Joseph. And my father said, you really mean it? He said, yes, Joe. I mean it. I'll have him bid today. You put your signature here, and your son Victor put his signature. That's all I need. And that was a lifetime friendship. So when that man died, he didn't owe my brother Victor anything. He so loved the friendship and the feeling of, well, decency that he had with my brother Victor. He gave him 150,000 cash. And that was tax-free. And the homes, everything was tax-free. And that building, which he bought for $50,000, was sold three years ago to the Bank of Nova Scotia. They tore it down and built a lovely structure, but they paid our family $840,000 for that building. So here was a gain, and there was no ta- capital tax gain. None. That whole thing was simply free. So I know what I'm talking about. All I need from you is the acceptance of it. Will you believe it? Will you believe that with God all things are possible? Will you believe that all things are possible to men? Well, you can prove it in the not distant future. But you are the operant power. It will not work itself. If you dare to assume this very night that you have a better job than you know hold, or that you have a larger income, you may be fired tomorrow. Don't be concerned. On reflection, you'll see it was necessary to move you towards the fulfillment of your assumption. You could be fired. And I wouldn't bat an eye if you told me tomorrow, well, I did what you told me. You know what happened? I was fired. I have seen that. It takes someone to fire you, to get you into a better job. I have seen that time and again. I wouldn't go out and quit the job. You may be promoted in the job, or you may be invited by some other concern that is competitive to join them. I do not know how it happens. I only know if you remain faithful to the assumption it's going to happen and you're going to be promoted towards the fulfillment of the state that you have dared to assume that is yours. So here I say dwell in the end. The end is where we begin. For if I've seen my name on the marquee, that's the end. I don't wait for the incident to take place in my world to move from one to the other to the other leading up to that. I dwell in the end. If I go to the very end, what would it be like were it true? So you imagine what you want. Believe that you have it and see how it works in the world. Those who scoff at it or let them scoff. Five years from now when you're on the top, they may be working for you. And they've even forgotten that they sat in the same audience with you. When you heard and believed, and they also heard but they didn't believe. And so you moved on, and they remained behind. And that's life. 